Today on The Dead Life, I have our in-house astrologer extraordinaire, Tom McMullen here. He's here to talk to us about the final eclipse of 2024, what that means, and what we can expect moving forward. If you want to leave me a message that might be shared on a future episode of The Dead Life and my Love Me, Love Me Not relationship segment, leave it at 802-DEAD-811. You can follow me on Instagram at Medium Allison on my Facebook fan page, and you can binge on my YouTube videos to watch readings, including episodes of The Dead Life. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to book a reading with me, go to AllisonDubois.com or email us at booking at AllisonDubois.com. Well, Tom, Hi. welcome back. <laughs> Glad take, to be back. Take three. <laughs> um. What's going on in our crazy world? Yeah, What's it's that? crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, we're in Libra, and uh, which started on September 23rd. And so right now, today, we're, we're like almost in October. And uh, I'll start us off with October 2nd, which uh, is a few days. We have a new moon in Libra. New moons mean that the sun and the moon are in the same sign. So we have both in Libra. And so how you are and how you express yourself and how you secure yourself are all in the same energy is usually what that means depending on the sign it's in and libra refers to your relationship profile your personal identity and independence versus your your um relationship profile and how you work with others uh it has it rules basically legal issues which we're going to have a ton of this month because of all the other aspects happening and so it, it rules peace and war and of course we know we're in a war period this whole year that's, you know, mirroring the same thing that was going on in 1968. <laughs> we have an election coming up fairly soon and it's rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's very much so. A lot of activity there. Yeah. It was interesting because I was doing a, um, I, I hadn't looked at Trump's chart in a long time and I finally pulled up Kamala Harris's. They both are born under full moon, which really surprised me. Uh, Trump's born under a Gemini Sagittarian full moon and Kamala Harris is born under full moon and Aries, an Aries and Libra full moon. Mm -hmm. So very interesting, and she's going to have that challenge. Um, you no, know, Biden also is born under a full moon. Yeah, that. Oh yeah, yes he is. Yes he is. <laughs> so I just Cancer Capricorn. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, Scorpio, Scorpio Taurus. Taurus. That was it. Yeah. So um, his nodes were in Cancer Capricorn. But um, <laughs> okay. but so but I was you know looking at this, and there is going to be you know a full moon that really affects Kamala Harris. Now, looking at both their charts in terms of, you know, who's going to win, who's going to lose all this, it's almost impossible. They both have very strong possibilities and they're equally as strong. So it just depends. I mean, you know, obviously we're just going to have to wait and see because it's so close. But, you know, working with that new moon, a new moon is more of a internal process because we're going into starting something new. And so we use this word a lot you know, you like this word, I like this word, is the word intention. Mm -hmm. And so I think what the focus is, what is your intention with your relationships with you and your life? Are they balanced? You know, do you feel like someone's dominating you or you're dominating them? Or do you feel like, you know, you're, you don't have enough relationships or you kind of want to be alone? All these things could be addressed about how you're looking at your relationships, whether with family members, whether with friends, partners, and because we're going in a very volatile period of time, who are your friends? <laughs> right. Right? A lot of people are getting rid of friends. It's like a clean house energy going on right now with relationships, it seems. Yes. And so and when I look at, you know, Mars being the opposite in Aries to the Libra energy, Mars is in Cancer pretty much to this month. And Mars in Cancer is very interesting because that means our direction is toward our emotions. So when you're checking in with the new moon as it starts, how are you feeling emotionally about your connections? Not just, you know, do I have enough friends in my life or whatever? How am I connected to them on a way that's good or a way that's in conflict? Yeah. Because Libra and Aries always represents a sense of conflict at some point. So it is war versus peace. And in Libra, Libra wants peace, but it, you know, it wants the balance. It really wants justice and fairness. That's why it rules the legal system, mm -hmm. uh, because we're always fighting for justice. And then Aries itself, it's like it's out for its own survival, essentially. You know, it's trying to just go after what it needs to survive like a warrior on a battlefield. And uh, that's why they tend to seem to be very like self-focused, because their nature is absolutely that. Where Libra turns its focus to itself and others, which makes it indecisive. 
<laughs> right. Which I would know because I'm a Libra. Mm -hmm. And uh, but when we make decisions, it, we're we're finally calm. You know, it's like getting that point takes us a while. Where Aries just does it. It's the just do it sign. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I always use this as an example. If you have six boys standing around the swimming pool and someone goes, I wonder how deep it is. The Aries will jump in, come back and go six feet. The Aries <laughs> will push the person in front of them in, see how far it is after they come up. I love how you go to the dark side. <laughs> no, I'm right. I'm right. I've got a Mars and Aries and I know a lot of Aries, Patty. Yeah. And um, no, they, they definitely, they're smart. They're going to push the other person and in so funny. and and then they'll come up and they'll say, how deep was it? <laughs> and they go grab it, throw the Aries and go, you find out. A Libra <laughs> might go in themselves. Yeah. One toe at a time, you know, easing themselves in. Oh, but. that's exactly how I get into the water. <laughs> I'm I, sure it is. Growing up in Southern California at the beach, I would go one toe at a time. That's so funny. Up to the ankles, to the knees. <laughs> Make sure there's no sharks at that level. Yeah, that's nice. so funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> you pick me, Allison. You know, there's <laughs> another thing about Libra that I don't think people get. People all think that Libra's very fair and diplomatic, which it can be. But we're in a Libra aspect going into a new moon in Libra. So super tons of Libra going on. Libra can make people seek justice as they see it. Absolutely. So I always say when there's Libra aspects, if you have an ex and they're still a little pest, put your car in the garage in this aspect because it might just get keyed because that can be their sense of justice. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm a, yeah. I'm a realist. Yeah, well, yeah, I understand that. I, but I, you know, look at when we look at Mars in Cancer, it's a protective energy. And it was so interesting when I was uh, writing this up, taking my notes, it reminded me like last week when Trump was doing a speech and he talked about protecting the women. I'm your protector. And I go, boy, that's a Mars in Cancer statement. Hmm. And I just thought that was so interesting that it came out as Mars goes in and has been in cancer well women do want to be protected so yeah good to hear <laughs> so and so it's it's you know the, our emotions are very intense with mars and cancer just very and it creates instant reactions hyper emotional mm -hmm. yeah and so you can fly off from the handle very easily don't get in arguments with family because cancer rules family and home kind, kind of keep the peace at home if you can mm -hmm. uh, if you've got you know opposite poles of people in your house that have different um opinions about the election just keep it to yourself don't get into the fights yeah you know definitely no yeah definitely no um can i ask you this about mars and cancer sure um can that also be makes you crave uh to be with family because cancer is like fourth of july energy yeah. like come on over let's have dinner like we want to congregate in that aspect, I would think. Yes. And not just family, but your friends that are family, you know, all of the, anyone that's that intimate, because it's an intimate, um, you know, energy. Cancer is very intimate and um, you're very sensitive. Okay. I'm kind of liking that energy now. We need a little sensitivity. Yeah. But if everyone gets along, fine. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Not, not the hyperbolic kind no. of energy that it can be, the mercurial anger that can come about. Yeah. And because then we go into Scorpio, but I'll just let you continue yeah, well, on the new yeah. moon path. Yeah. Um, um, on the 8th through the 10th, get ready for Jupiter to go retrograde. And so Jupiter's in Gemini. And so it's going to go retrograde on the 10th. And this is like false accusations, blame, victimhood becomes themes. Religious fundamentalism takes center stage more. Um, because Like what? Well, you know, people are going to start getting in their camps and uh, you're going to get more false information because Jupiter in, in Gemini, it's all about communication, both signs. So is this like online and oh, the news it. are going to be false information yes. or? It, because we're so close to an election because it's coming from everywhere and it's, and it's in a retrograde. So it's like you, you want to turn it off and just think for yourself. <laughs> so it, if Jupiter's retrograde, and this is for all of us laymen out there trying to learn, um, Jupiter can be expansion and it can be some sense of luck. Is that right? Yes. So if it's retrograde, that means we have no luck. No. <laughs> is that, what does that mean? <laughs> no. It really means the <laughs> ultimate thing of Jupiter. It means truth. It's the truth seeker. Okay. So when we're looking at, for the truth of the answers, you know, that we're given in our media, 
is it real? Is it our truth? Are we wanting to make it our truth? Because that's what we want to believe. So you're saying people have to think for themselves yes. and not take uh, things at face value that they see on the news or on clickbait or... A absolutely. Got it. Yes. And, you know, check your facts. I mean, the whole thing is the truth is what the facts are, not when someone's trying to convince you of mm -hmm. uh, and deceive you. Right. Because it can be a very deceptive energy at the same time. You know, and, and Jupiter is essentially, when it's in its, its opposite sign of Gemini, it, it has a sense of mass communication. <laughs> so it is coming from everywhere. Okay. And, and so that's it's just important to know that, um, you know, we're, we're going to go into thinking for yourself, trust yourself. It's a trust issue because your truth is to trust you, not everybody else. I'm curious with all the flooding, the damage, the disasters, the, you know, human loss, everything that we're seeing around the hurricanes and and the bad weather if uh we're going to if if that's going to be distracting as well with everything else going on because we really care about the people and we want to help them and and rebuild the homes and 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 all of that so there's just so much going on right now it's hard to see how you're going to find a balance in libra between you know all of the people that are here and shouldn't be here, the criminals running around our country, rapists, murders, all that, and then we have um, this hurricane that was just devastating come in and and wipe out a lot of life. So how how does one balance all of that? Um, that's going to be challenging for uh, the people in charge at the moment. But this is what war is all about. War is destruction, and then the humanity and the chaos that follows. Right. And so when, since we have Neptune and Saturn and Pisces, you know, this creates that energy even more. We had that huge, huge hurricane just this last few days right. in the Southeast, and it's created enormous devastation that's displaced people. Absolutely. And so, you know, what, what's interesting is you, you look at Neptune is water, the essence of water, and it was really that storm was a giant wave. So that's how an astrologer would read it. You'd yes. look at those signs in Pisces and say, there's water damage, there's like some sort of uh, storm coming. But then Saturn is the physical structure of everything. Okay. So it, it's like if you if you look at a cliff and a, and a wave's hitting against the cliff, it yeah. essentially erodes it. Right. You see, so this is that energy of Neptune and Saturn together in Pisces itself, that sign, the water sign. So it is eroding things and it's also, you know, eroding beliefs of people or their world and it creates depression and anxiety yeah. and it's negative and un being unsure um, and it creates fear, it creates a lot of fear. Um, and so, but when we look at, you know, the devastation, the displacement of those people is no different from the war in the Middle East right now where all these Lebanese are going into Syria running away from what's going on, you know? So once again, war displaces people. Yeah. This creates immigration problems and all kinds of issues that are been going on for quite a while Every, now. Everything seems to be coming to a head right now. It's a very interesting time um, and we'll see how it all plays out. But at least with a hurricane, that's not man-made. It's something that happens. With war, that's a, just a bunch of uh, egos yeah. flying around along with missiles and bombs and death. And so um, do you look ahead in charts to see when things like that are going to come to an end, like conflict? Or is well, this, you just look at now? I, well, I'm, we're doing this for right, now. Right, right. I always kind of look ahead. No, I was just asking in general. Yeah, in general, I look ahead because I kind of want hope. <laughs> right. See where it's coming, when it's coming. Yeah. But there's always little things that happen that are helping us along the way because Jupiter, you know, itself rules religious fundamentalism. So it is religious wars. They always are religious wars, you know. Right. So that's the whole thing going on in the Middle East. And we have this one good aspect, you know, around the 8th of this month. Where but Ukraine and Russia, that's not a religious war. That's a territorial war. Yeah, yeah, war. that's a different one okay. altogether. Got it. Yeah. But negotiations become a possibility on the 8th because the Sun and Mercury and Libra trine Jupiter. So Ooh. there's an interesting thing where you can negotiate with others and and maybe there can be some sort of resolutions of some things along with, you know, what's going on. So I kind of look at for that in, in the news. Uh -huh. Is someone negotiating and kind of pulling back? Um, or well, they're, they're already talking about that, how they want to negotiate that right. and they want the hostages back. So Right. But we've been doing that for a year, so hopefully it'll make a difference and now. That, yeah, and that's just this. It keeps going on and then it never gets done. Resolved, yeah. On the 11th, Pluto stations and goes direct into Capricorn for the very last time. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and goes to, I'm writing it down. 
on what day is that? <laughs> the 11th, my, my best friend's birthday, October 11th. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so it is a very short period now <laughs> as it leaves. and, uh, and It's then, been an exhausting sign. Yeah, well, you know, it stays in a sign for a very long time. Well, it was 15 years, 16. 16 years, yeah. 16 years of, yeah. and then back and forth the last, what, year and a half where mm -hmm. it was like, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out, I'm in. It's yeah. like, get out. So Pluto, Pluto stations and goes direct on the 11th. Yeah. Okay. And it, but it makes a hard aspect to Mercury and Libra. So that creates some conflicts right there. So there's be a lot of um, sort of arguing about the rules. <laughs> so again, <laughs> what nothing legal, new, right? Legal issues, okay. all the legal issues, and and it creates a power struggle of who's right and who's wrong, trying to control somebody through your ideas versus theirs. So watch the arguing again. I have a question. So in Libra, if somebody has a court case right now, like a custody case or a divorce um, in the works or or a lawsuit in Libra, it, is the uh, judge? more likely to be, I always would think they'd be more diplomatic in that aspect because we all take on the energy. If I was going to negotiate something, I'd want to do it in Libra. Um, would you agree with that? Or do you want to elaborate? Looking at it, I'm looking at it in the news because right now a lot of Trump's law, legal issues are coming to the surface again, and they're talking about <laughs> pulling them back. So they're trying to negotiate it rather than it was so forced in. And well, it, no, it, they're actually talking that it could end up being dismissed that's altogether. What I'm yeah. yeah, that's so what I'm it's saying. just so it, there was a lot of nothing there, and it's just a distraction. But for individual people that are watching this, if they're in a lawsuit, would this be an energy? You're going to see more individuals go to court and cases be settled. Would yeah, you think? Yes, you could. Right during this time in this yeah. month. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. You know, but there is going to be a Venus in opposition. To Uranus and Scorpio, so um, you know, in Taurus, so that that creates a conflict if you are in a divorce situation, <laughs> mm. <laughs> because Venus and Scorpio, you're someone else's money, and then Taurus, your own. Uh, so there, if we're looking at divorce issues, that's going to be a little challenge. I think if I'm going to court, I'm calling you and having you look at the dates, and then I'm requesting <laughs> certain dates to go to court and some that I want to avoid. Yeah. Um, and we have a full moon in Aries. What day does that come? That's the seventeenth. Okay, okay, that was probably your next stop. Well, I was gonna. There's a. There's a. On the thirteenth, fourteenth, there's a tension increases because Mars, Sun, and Chiron square off and are forced. It kind of forces us to do something against our control. So if you feel like someone's forcing you against something you want to do, um, you know, keep that in mind because it seems like someone's trying to make you do something you don't want to do. Ooh, um, I don't like that. Yeah, I know. So it's, and that goes back with the arguing. And it's that's like, for everyone. That's just yeah. for every individual on the planet. Yeah, like somebody yeah. tries to force yeah. their will on you, or like, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah, and they'll, they'll argue with you and try to force their point of view their oh, way. Oh, okay. Yeah, everybody just stay inside until the election's <laughs> over. We'll be fine. We don't need to hear each other's opinions. Just to m carry on. Stay with your close family. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. On, on the 17th is the full moon. Now the full moon is the opposite of the new moon. This is when everything comes to a crescendo. So everything you've been working on in the first two weeks of the month comes to its culmination. Mm -hmm. And so we have the Aries, you know, Libra full moon. And this is a conflict extraordinaire. It's it's the biggest impact of the month. Are we going to war in that aspect? Well, there's there's more. I can't tell you the conflict of this month coming up because there's it's going to be Mars is opposing Pluto. So that's not good. No, because Mars is in Cancer and Pluto's in its last degree of Capricorn. So there's one last hurrah. Wow. Of, of you know whatever it's going to be. Once again, you can't predict the thing. It happens in so many different forms but it is but, it is a conflict but it's, mars is in cancer and we're a cancerian country yes. so does that yes. would you read that as we're getting opposed um by outside forces Possibly. that want things to stay the way they've always been and us give them their money give them our money yeah. as we always have <laughs> that, could that be the conflict <laughs> it could be a lot of conflict okay because when you put if you know you were born with mars opposite pluto it's like you've been in a fight for a lifetime damn you know, you're always in fighting somebody that's in a exhausting conflict. so and that's a win-lose and yeah. so since we're in libra the point is negotiation so does this force us into a negotiation because we don't want to fight right um and you know we're t you were giving dynamics to, um librans aren't always like the sweet little souls i say right. we are. yeah I, my favorite saying is um, librans are aries with manners 
So, <laughs> so they think. <laughs> we think, yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's how we see it because we're so so uh, dignified and classy of yes, how of we are. Yes, of course, subjective. Yeah, yes, of course. Of course. Yeah. So, but people that are absorbing Libra energy that say are Scorpio or Aquarius or they're another sign absorbing Libra, they're going to act it out differently that a sun in Libra might act out a sun in Libra that they're they because it's already natally part of who they are. It's their energy. Right. But now we're taking on this need for justice individually. I think you're going to see a lot of um, bad acting going on out there. I think people are going to be lashing out because it's justice the way they see it. That's exactly the point. Yeah. My point, my view versus your view. Right. And that's why, you know, when we get into the climax of this thing, you know, it's it's it just it creates so much tension. There's so much tension with Mars and Pluto naturally. Yeah. And it's a constructive or destructive energy. And mm-hmm. so are you trying to destroy someone else or are they trying to destroy you? And I mean that literally. Right. You know, because I look at the warrior energy anyway. Warrior males, as I always look at them as warriors on battlefields, because their their need in that nature, which is the Aries nature, if they don't win, they die on the battlefield. That's how their survival instinct operates. If okay. I don't win, I die. Right. A female warrior is extraordinarily different because she's not about herself. She's about those she's responsible for and takes care of. So their battle, when you get a warrior male and female, and I get it in a chart, in a reading, mm-hmm. I said, the minute money comes into the equation, this is where the war begins if you have children, because the man comes home with a brand new Ferrari, and she goes, um, we need money for our kids' education, because her focus and resources are very different from the man's. Right. And so this is what creates that conflict. And so, you know, the whole point is, how do you compromise the two things? And uh, I don't know, think you can compromise with a Ferrari. No, but, you know, we always talk about, you know, John and Patty being the perfect warrior, male and female. They're on the same. Yes. They have the same values and the same goals together. They well, they're work both together. law enforcement. Right. <clears throat> they're married. They're warriors. And they will, they'll war together. They're, and they'll war for their friends. They will war for their friends. Yeah. They're deeply loyal. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be the, for us, our prototype of a warrior couple. So I know exactly what energy you're talking about because most of the women I know are warrior females and yeah. they're not afraid of anything. They don't like live in fear. They just sort of attack whatever the problem is. And, um, and I get that. I, I love warrior females. Yeah, I love I, the strength and the power of them. I know you do. Yeah. I know you do. And so I get what you're saying that women and men would deal with it differently that that have an Aries aspect or energy to them. Um, but war, we're already in two wars. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to have a full moon in Aries. And we have a um, running, somebody running for president who is a full moon in Aries, yeah. was born in a full moon in Aries. Yeah. Um, yeah. That isn't great. <laughs> well, not, not for her. Great, not great. <laughs> um, so I'm going to enjoy the new moon with the sun and moon and Libra. And if you want to negotiate something, I would do it in that two and a half day window. (laughs) That's a good time to negotiate. And that's this week, October 2nd, October 2nd, my anniversary, early happy anniversary to my husband, Joe. There you go. You got a new moon. I know. Um, So, so the 21st, um, Mars is making a favorable uh, path to Neptune in Pisces. And because, you know, Mars is in Cancer going to Neptune and Pisces, this is what you were talking about earlier. We'll have a have us looking at a humanitarian crisis, you know, and, and what we need to do. This conflict causes uh, us, you know, to move toward that humanity of ourselves in terms of destructions are happening uh-huh. and, um, and want to protect those that have been displaced. Right. We've got to start managing the displacement of the problems of war. Mm-hmm. And so that aspect at the end of October. And do you mean for war and the hurricane as all well? All of it. Got yes. It. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take a while to get that mess in the southeast cleaned up. Probably years. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's and then and then October twenty third, the sun moves into Scorpio. Ah. And um and it's in you know right away, um sun moves into Scorpio with the moon and Mars together in opposition. <laughs> so this creates family conflict right away and control issues so, really yeah so so much to look forward to what about christmas santa we're, mate we're gonna go through <laughs> I'm november just kidding. i'm just trying to skip ahead it's all so painful november 1st is the scorpio new moon 
Okay. okay. It does trine Saturn and Pisces, so it creates intense emotional needs. Um, you know, I would focus on planning and working with others in this new moon. Okay. So once again, it's introverted. So you know, it's very intense. Scorpio is the most intense, and it's the most dependent of signs. I on, think I think um, all signs know they're the most intense. Yeah, yeah well, we all <laughs> agree. <laughs> uh, but Scorpio is internally intense. Right. And uh, and so it, it, it goes in and protects itself, mm -hmm. you know, because it's its whole point is to be cautious and trusting of others. Uh -huh. uh, and then it learns trust issues because of it. But it, it's, a, you know, working with others is the goal of Scorpio because it is a dependency issues. It's trying to work with someone else where both sides are on the same page of what their values are because it represents values mm -hmm. and resources. Money is always a part of Scorpio and Taurus. And um, but Scorpio new moon, the moon again will be more intense than the sun in this case. So the need to be connected to somebody very emotionally and sexually, um, it's a time for marriage, if you will. Pregnancy. Pregnancies. Yes. Get pregnant. Yeah. Yep. So um, because that's that's, you know, it's the baby making energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it's uh, uh, transformation. It's two things come together to make a third thing. And that's what we call. That's funny that yeah. you'd say that because Fallon got married in last year in Scorpio. Mm. So like right on target. Right there. on target. I looked at my marriage. Taurus daughter. I'm like, are you high? Why didn't you ask Uncle Tom about that? Because that's a <laughs> physical opposition, honey. Yeah, but it's a, it is marriage for yes, her. Yes, it was. You know, the yes. two, they came together in till death do us part. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the Scorpio energy. Once you're in, you can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's called control Ever. It. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> but it is transformation. So the relationship becomes stagnant is the worst thing for anybody who's a Scorpio in a relationship that's not working. If it becomes stagnant or someone cheats, that's always the worst. Yeah. Um, you know, those are the issues where it's like, and this is why there's a lot of arguing between couples and Scorpios because they want to stir it up. They get bored. <laughs> they need drama. Yeah, they need drama. They it just, is the sign of drama, creating drama. They just need a Leo and an Aries as a friend. <laughs> of that to go around, I'm sure. Well, and again, on the second and third, Mars makes an exact opposition to Pluto. So it's at its exact point on the second and third of, of November. So we it comes to its crescendo, essentially. And so what then, does that mean? So it means it's at its most intense. Most intense. Yeah. yeah. The Scorpio? Yep. Aspect? Mars opposite Pluto. Oh, Mars opposite yeah. Pluto. It's at its last degree in Cancer. Oh. Because the next day, in the fourth and fifth, Mars enters Leo, your favorite. Uh. And, and Jupiter opposes. So, and, you know, so we got to look at Venus, um, you know, in this situation. It's in Sagittarius. So we, it defines the legal chaos that needs to be ensued. I mean, this is all the legal stuff. And uh, so it creates extreme reactions. And, um, you know, Mars and Leo opposite Pluto when it moves into Aquarius is a very volatile wow. energy. But uh, how would you read that kind of volatile energy? What would an example be of how that could look? Um, well, it's it's somebody who, let's see, we're looking at Mars and Leo. That somebody has to be the one that's, you the know, Victor. The, yes. Got it. Yes, absolutely. So and it's it'll be subjective, completely subjective. So mm -hmm. it's how I see it, how it needs to turn out, if you will. Wow. So, you know, and, the, and it opposes Jupiter. So, again, we'll have sort of um, some religious elevation issues around it. Like, Well, who, I mean, we have Israel under attack. Exactly. So it could be the Jews voting that don't normally vote. Yeah. Things like that could happen. Sure. Right. Or just the conflict itself, you know, because, I mean, who doesn't feel badly for for the, the Jewish people? I mean, it's just terrible. Well, and since Jupiter opposes Venus and Moon in Sagittarius, there's going to be, again, People having a lot of arguments about who's right and listening, all more new information coming out of everywhere. Yeah. You know? And again, it's this is right around the election. Right. Expect, well, absolutely the, expect that there, everybody's going to scream and yell about it didn't go right. Because they're every side, well, no matter which side. our country's divided, right. so, so sure. Like we had last time, it's going to be lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. That's this aspect is set it up perfectly. So are these cheating aspects or no, are these fair aspects? They're just, it's, it's, people want to win. So they'll try and win no matter how they're going to do it. You know, so, a fair win, I'm like totally cool with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like so on the up and up. So it, it's, you know, the whole point is we've been driven to the fact that, or uh, to believe that it, things are rigged or whatever. We have to find out. That's the point. That's the point of finding what the facts are. So we've got to follow the facts. We'll see what it goes, but it will be a very chaotic 
um, election time. Uh, it, I think it has been. It's been such a chaotic summer. I think everybody's just ready for it to be over at this point. We, remember life when we were young and we didn't have all these problems <laughs> yeah. and we didn't have to think about it and everyone didn't have an opinion. It was yeah. such a different time. So I think people, as all of these intense aspects that you're talking about, it's so important for them to protect their spirit and their mind in these aspects and disconnect the phone and just veg out, go to the, go, go swimming, go have a barbecue and don't listen to the news every day. Yeah. You know, just be, I think people aren't living and uh, I do worry for people I'm seeing a lot of death right now as well. And like you mentioned, suicides, suicides are really picking up the pace right now. Mm -hmm. I'm a medium, so I see it on my end with bookings and, and the readings. And I just worry for people's sort of mental well-being, spiritual well-being, um, physical well-being in some parts of the world. And it's just a lot. Well, you know, the suicides have a lot to do with the Neptune-Saturn energy in Pisces. As I said, that can create great powerlessness, depression, futility, Yeah, you know, and someone's weak, they, they go into that world very easily. Sure. Um, so feel like they're drowning. Mm -hmm. And so for those who have that nature, this is where you have to fight against it. Mm -hmm. Your war is with you. Not, yeah. It's not on the outside. It's on the inside. Um, the uh, 15th is the full moon mm -hmm. in November of uh, Scorpio and Taurus, but the moon will be in uh, Taurus um, and it's going to conjoin Uranus. So once again, that's an extreme reaction <laughs> because it's always hitting a, another big outside planet that's trying to stir everything up. Great. You know, so, and the, but you bring Venus and Capricorn into the equation. You got to bring Venus in, in that one. So taking charge and trying to stable a com stabilize a conflict. And, and Saturn turns direct to help out because Saturn's going to finally turn direct uh -huh. and start bringing order to chaos by the middle of November. Ooh, so this that is where, sounds nice. This is where all the, all the law stuff comes. All right, let's get our papers together and start working on this. Okay, like <laughs> um, order to chaos, that's like a really big thing because we've been in chaos for the last few years. And so I, that's actually very inspiring to hope yeah. that we could reach that place. Um, fewer victims, all that good stuff. Um, if people are overwhelmed, November 15th in that full moon in Taurus, if you need to unplug, we know the beauty of moon in Taurus, eat, sleep, sex, repeat, right. make a dinner reservation, buy some new lingerie or silk boxers and have a great night with your favorite someone. Use that full moon in Taurus to your absolute best ability. <laughs> and I will tell you on top of that, in, in addition, because it'll be next to Uranus, then don't go to the same restaurant like you guys always do because Torian energy is very habitual. Yeah. Try something new. Yeah. You know, because try something new where it's like, let's go somewhere we've never been before and mm -hmm. see what happens. Take the risk. You mm -hmm. see, get out of the habit which the Scorpio energy likes because it wants to stir things up anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you'll like this next one, Allison. On the 19th of November, Pluto leaves Capricorn for good and enters Aquarius. Yay. As we begin the journey to science, technology, medicine, and new social developments for the next 20 years. Rebellion of the people. Well, yeah. And, um, you know, and the sun opposes Uranus, giving birth to rebellious tendencies and, <laughs> and discoveries. Yes. So it's a very interesting so shift say, of energy. Say goodbye to daddy. Daddy's leaving the house yeah. after 16 years. It's, yeah. Time for a new rule and a new order. Yeah. And that we're going to definitely do um, a podcast on the new order of the new world coming in next year because it is in amazingly interesting. <laughs> so excited about that. I yeah. can't wait to hear it. Yeah. You know, it would be really exciting if we didn't have to get a year older, Tom. Oh, yeah. You would remind me. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tom. Yeah, Your birthday is coming up. Yes, it is. And I just wanted to make sure you got a nice <laughs> shout out. Yeah. So, well, as long as it's a birthday and not a death day, I'm uh, still here. <laughs> everybody sends Tom some birthday kisses oh, energetically. So I'll be, I'll be seeing you for your birthday. I'll make sure. We make it special for you because I know how much everybody loves you and loves <laughs> it when you come on the show to tell us what to expect, especially for the fall. 
And I appreciate well, you being here for sure. I well, I'm glad to because this is a big fall because there's so much that's going on. Yes, you know, um, you won't like the next thing because Mercury, oh. Mercury grows retrograde in Sagittarius um, on the 27th, so we're going to go through a three week of retrograde. You know, I feel like after everything we've been through, we can take Mercury retrograde. I'm just yeah. like, oh my god, sure, throw it in the mix. <laughs> well, and the final is on the 30th, the new moon in Sagittarius is really a good one. It makes a favorable aspect to Mars, which helps us, you know, um, fight for justice and truth, but it moves us forward, totally moves us forward. So what's, say that again, full moon, the that's full, sun the and new Sag. Moon, the new moon. New moon and Sag. Sag is the very end of this, of n November. New moon. New moon and Sag. Um, so, you know, that, and it makes a favorable aspect to Mars, which gives you that sense we can move forward now. Oh. That sounds nice. <laughs> yes. Okay, and right the, before Christmas. And, and That's this great. new moon, the sun's stronger than the moon in this case, as the fire signs ruled by the sun. So it tends to have more of a, you know, forward moving. All right. Yeah. I I'm feeling hopeful. That sounds like some hopeful stuff in the midst of the storm. We got to get through it. <laughs> we'll get through it. These next two months, there's a lot to get through. Um, agreed. There's a lot to get through and we're going to do it. We're going to get through it and we're going to get through it together. Yes. And it's going to be great. So um, I'm going to have you back in December when we go over what to expect for the new year. If that was that all that you wanted to yeah. touch on. Great. Yeah. Um, and what to expect in 2025, a nine year and a year of endings. Amen. And beginnings. And beginnings. So then a one year is supposed to be beginnings. Which one is it? So nine is endings. But beginnings can start, but a one year is like brand new beginnings. Like yeah, it's just, okay, got yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. Just being, I like to be clear for everybody watching out there that doesn't really understand the like numerology or astrology. And I like to try and break it down in layman's terms because I know what that feels like. Yeah. So um, I hope that does help people to learn and absorb the different uh, ways that we map out and look at energy. And we will be having you back. So where can people find you to book a reading? Well, TomMcMullen.com is my website. And if you just want to go straight to me, it's Tom at TomMcMullen.com and request a reading. Yes. Uh, and so that's all you need to know. And in closing, I just wanted to say we had f three eclipses so far this year. We have a fourth. This is at this week. Mm -hmm. And then we're done with the eclipses for yes. 2024. Yes. Amen. Well, that's something we can actually rule out. So um, I hopefully the eclipse is going to bring some new energy for us that gives us sort of vitality. And, well, and an eclipse kind of like pulls you away from something. It, you know, it, it's, there's a shadow energy to it. So there's a, something that you're you're refusing to want to look at. Yeah. So if there's something that you're refusing to look at that's gnawing at you, look at it. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Good advice. Good advice. Well, thank you for dropping by and giving us our fall forecast. And thank you to my listeners for tuning in. You can catch me next Tuesday for a fresh episode of The Dead Life, where I will be covering the Lindsay Wells case. I'm Allison Dubois. This is The Dead Life. And to all of my believers out there, don't stop believing. Join us next week on The Dead Life. And don't forget to subscribe now to get notified of every new episode.